actually feel like teaching is as much uh, a part of what I do as the, my daily practice. I mean, I feel like it really supports the performance aspect of what I do. I wouldn't want to just teach and not perform. I wouldn't want to just perform and not teach. They go hand in hand. Once you reach that place where you want to be, uh, you want to be the type of leader who leaves a ladder behind you to climb up behind. Not the, not the one who pulls it up behind you and makes it impossible for others to find. So, you know, they know I'm here to help them get to where they want to be. And maybe it'll involve music, maybe it won't. Maybe it'll involve, involve the oboe, maybe it won't. But they'll be good leaders and they'll be good people. I grew up with uh, all kinds of animals and come from a very animal-loving family. I moved to Dallas uh, 17 years ago for the orchestra job. And I had been involved in rescue in Rochester, New York, where I played before, and I wanted to find a new rescue home. So Operation Kindness, I had heard really great things, and it's only three miles from where I live. So I came over and I just started walking dogs, doing some of the volunteer orientation, and then I got more and more entrenched. I started fostering. At this point, I fostered over 200 dogs, not all at once. I'm not a hoarder, but just, you know, uh, families, one at a time. And then I uh, started the Concert for Kindness because I thought there's a way I can help fundraise. It started out with the germ of an idea of what can I do? Well, I can play the oboe. But that's not enough to raise the kind of money I wanted to raise. So I thought, what if I partnered and made it more of a fusion, art fusion concert? And I uh, was watching CBS Sunday Morning and Teresa Berg, the photographer, was being featured because she would go into shelters and she would take rescue animals from out behind the bars and, you know, show them how they really are rather than, you know, these really depressed, dirty. She'd fix them up to, to where you could see them in your living room because that's the, that's the animal that they are, not these, these poor creatures in the shelter. And I thought, I wonder if she might want to partner with me. She was going to the grocery store and looked up and saw my studio right above her grocery store. So she said, I guess this is meant to be. And uh, she sent me a message and said, can we get together? Maybe we can pool our resources and our uh, passion and see what we come up with. So that's what we did. And we decided to start doing these concerts, which are a mixture of classical music and photography. Our first concert for kindness raised about $10,000. Fast forward seven years, and now we are in Moody Performance Hall, which is a full-size concert hall, and we're raising uh, $80,000 with our events. Every single dollar goes to this no-kill shelter called Operation Kindness. We receive absolutely no public funding, so all of the money that comes to us comes from us from individual donations, fees, and things like the Concert for Kindness. And so things like that make it possible to keep our doors open, to bring animals in, and to provide medical care. So it has a huge impact on us. I get so much back. I didn't go into it with that in mind. I, I went into it thinking, how can I help the animals? What can I do with my passion to help the animals? This is why I am an artist so that I can impact the community in this way. All of these animals, it's like, I look at them and I say, you are the why. You are the why behind everything I do. She is inspirational to everybody. She works so hard. I have seen her pull dogs off the street, adopt pets out of parking lots. I've seen her put dirty, smelly puppies in the back of her car when she's on her way to a concert and doesn't know what to do with them, but doesn't want to leave them on the street. <laughs> you know, and I've seen her up all night with sick puppies and, um, you know, she just doesn't stop giving. I also think our future in, in the arts depends on this getting out into the community and making ourselves seen, making ourselves heard. Uh, you can't expect everyone in the community to, to come to the concert hall anymore. So get out there and also show that you are committed to the community in which you live. And by making a difference, you broadcast that. Well, Erin is such a wonderful orchestra citizen. She really cares about what's happening with the Dallas Symphony. 
She cares about what's happening in Dallas, and that makes her really special because we always know we can count on her. And I love to hear her talk about her students. She's so committed to her students. It's as if they're her children. And I find that to be such a transformational thing to hear because I know that she must make such a huge difference in their lives. I know she loves what she does with, with Dallas Symphony Orchestra. She takes it very serious. She's a consummate professional, but she is just so giving of her time and energy here. Um, she has an amazing reputation. Like I said, she was a legend when I got here and she has continued to be a legend. Being on the stage and my, my day in, day out job is very meaningful to me, but this, uh, this is an outside passion. The fact that my employer has supported me so heartily and this uh, principal grant has supported this passion and allowed me to grow this whole other event that raises money, a significant amount of money for um, something I'm very passionate about. That's, I think that's the part of the award that makes me happiest is we are, we are drawing attention to the fact that the Dallas Symphony uh, supports its musicians in their passions off the stage and in the community. And I think that's the greatest thing for, for the, the Ford Award for Musicians, is it draws attention to that. <laughs>